Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rudy and thank you so much for being here. Today's video is going to be an 18 month update on my tretinoin journey. Yeah, okay, yeah, 18 months. Technically the 18 months was in February of this year, but I really wanted to make sure I had a handle on the products and the things that I wanted to talk about. And honestly, I was still figuring out how I felt about my skin enough to be able to talk about it with you guys today. I wanna to cover some of the ways in which my skin has improved, talk about some bumps in the road I've had since my last one year check-in, which I can link down below if you're interested, talks a little bit more about my acne journey. Today we're gonna to be talking a little bit more about the health of my skin and the products I'm using right now. I'm gonna talk about how I think that my skin has changed completely from oily to dry, and I cannot believe I just said that. And then I'm also gonna talk about how I've incorporated some newer, more trendy you know, ingredients in my routine that I previously had mentioned that I didn't use because I didn't want to irritate my skin. And now I feel like I'm starting to incorporate those and seeing some good results. So we'll go over that as well. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Rudy. I upload twice a week and we talk about more than just my acne journey on this channel. We talk about skincare, makeup, beauty, vlogging, mental health. We talk about beauty and life as a whole and I would love to have you join. Let's start by saying my skin has continued to improve over the past six months from our last check-in. I notice the glowiness continuing no matter when I have just SPF on, nothing on, or full face of makeup, I feel like that glow is always radiating through my skin. My skin is the absolute best it has ever been even before using tretinoin or having acne. It is now better than it was pre-acne, which is a feat to say, if you have been through an acne journey, you know that when it's first happening, you just want to get over the acne part. You just wanna get having clear skin and you don't really care as much about having that beautiful glowy skin because you just want your breakouts to be gone. I'm so far past that part of my journey now that I'm enjoying seeing these little changes in my skin like hyperpigmentation fading and that glow and my pores looking more clear because truly things are going so well with tretinoin that those are the improvements that I am noticing. Does that mean that everything has been smooth sailing? Absolutely not. You guys know that I have incredibly sensitive skin and that's something that I factor into everything in my life, all the way from what I eat to what I put on my face. And in the past couple months, I have had an allergic reaction or a rash or this thing I always get on my face that I've talked about with you guys many times, I don't exactly know what to call it, but I did get allergy testing for that and I talked to an allergist and we determined together that it was a celiac rash. So I actually filmed an entire video, kind of a story time of the process of what it's like to get allergy tested. So if you're interested, I can link that up above. But basically, besides being allergic to every sort of tree and most, you know, pollen and dander in the world, I'm also allergic to gluten, which technically it's not an allergy. What it is is that your body just can't process that enzyme. So because of that, if I come in contact with gluten, either physically, topically, or if I accidentally have some, I can develop a rash that hits on my face and my arms has been where I've gotten it the worst. I've also had it down my hips before. So this is a reoccurring thing that's happened to me in the past 10 years. So my husband and I are pretty good about making sure that we don't share a toaster, but we got a brand new one. We're going to be super strict about it and I'm hoping that that will keep me from having that situation again, but it is good to know that that's why and it wasn't an acne situation. So those are kind of separate things that I wanted to mention. However, we all know in the summer that I tend to get very oily and we'll get to that as well, but who knows what will come then. Last summer I did get fungal acne and I treated it with a prescription strength fungal treatment. So we'll see what happens in another six months. I made the decision to start to incorporate new things into my routine based on the fact that my skin was getting really resilient and it was feeling really good. But there were some other things that I wanted to address that tretinoin just wasn't doing as fast for me. And let's talk about that. <laughs> Oh God. I have to leave that sneeze in because my sneeze opened my first YouTube video ever. Why did I do that? <laughs> Why did I do that? Anyways, let's start with, you know, the current tretinoin situation that I have. And a lot of people get like mad at me when I tell them that I'm still on 0.025%. This is actually a brand new tube. Look how pretty she is. She's stunning. 
my old tube expired, so I just went and picked up a new one uh, last week. People get mad because they're like, well, why aren't you going up in strength? Why aren't you going up in usage? Because I'm still on 0.025% and I'm still using it every three nights. And the truth is, it works for me. Look at my skin, I told you, my skin has never looked better in my life. Why would I want to ruin that by increasing irritation and increasing usage when clearly I don't need to, to treat my acne, which is what I use tretinoin for, and to give me that glow that I'm looking for, I have found the right amount and the routine that works for me. Will I always stay on 0.025%? I don't know. May I increase in the future when I'm looking for better anti-aging effects? Possibly, but for now, this is what works for me. And if you feel like you would like to increase and your skin is able to take that on, by all means do that. However, I just wanna be clear that you do not have to be on a high strength of tretinoin for it to work. That is a question I get all the time. Do I need to be on 0.1% for me to see results? No, I have been on the lowest dose since I got it 18 months ago and my skin looks amazing. And I want to also emphasize that even though it's a low dose, it is a prescription strength retin-A. So it is still far stronger than anything you can get over the counter or at the drugstore. So regardless, do what's best for your skin. This is just what's working for me right now. So I'm not gonna do a play-by-play -play of my entire routine that I use with tretinoin because honestly, it's in the process of being updated. However, I do have a dedicated routine video already uploaded to my channel. It's an evening routine. I also have a morning routine. That is perfectly fine if you are just starting out with tretinoin or even if you are a veteran and you just want a solid, sensitive, skin-friendly routine. I can link that up above. But I am gonna talk about some of the things that I've kind of pulled into my routine that I feel like are standout products and the ways that I've been able to incorporate them without any irritation. So first let's start with this cleanser. I've talked about this in a trendy skincare video. This is the Hero Cosmetics Clear Collective Exfoliating Jelly Cleanser. Back in the day, I would never use an exfoliating product on my skin because I am on tretinoin and I don't feel the need to have both, which is still true in the sense that I don't use an exfoliating leave-on product, especially in the same night as tretinoin because again, I have sensitive skin and I don't feel like I need both. However, as my skin is getting oilier, as we get warmer in Tennessee, because it is getting quite warm already this spring, I've liked incorporating a very gentle face wash that has exfoliating properties in it that can help lift off some of the dead skin cells that I may have on my face from excess oil grease, I'm trying to work out more, all of these things that can build oil and sebum on your face. I'm trying to help break that down so that my tretinoin can really do its best work on my skin. This face wash includes AHAs, which I find are a bit more gentle than salicylic acid face wash. It's super gentle, it's safe for sensitive skin, fragrance free. I've really enjoyed using this and bonus, it is super affordable. You can find it at Target. So if you feel like you kind of want to up your game in the summer to help get rid of some of the sebum, maybe help with black heads and blocked pores, try this out. I have had zero irritation while using this, which is amazing. The other standout product that I've recently incorporated into my routine that I wouldn't have otherwise is a vitamin C. And I know, I can't believe I just said that too. This is the Golden Booster from Beekman 1802. Again, I talked about this brand in the trendy skincare video because I've really been enjoying their products, especially their milk primer and their moisturizer, which is a bloom cream, that's what it's called. Everything in their line is like a prebiotic moisturizer made with goat milk made for sensitive skin, fragrance free. It's just, it's really beautiful stuff. So they sent me this golden booster and we had a full phone call conversation about this product because I told them I do not use vitamin C. I never have and I have no intention of using vitamin C because I am so sensitive, but that doesn't mean I don't want the effects of a vitamin C. I have quite a bit of hyperpigmentation from past acne on my cheeks and my forehead, even from all the way back from high school. And I haven't seen a significant lifting of that with tretinoin. It's slowly but surely happening, but I would like to see the brightening effects of using a vitamin C. However, most vitamin Cs are way too sensitizing and way too strong for my sensitive skin especially paired in the same night as tretinoin. But what is really unique about this product is that it is made with alma berry. So it's actually a plant derived vitamin C alternative, 20 times more vitamin C than an orange. It's meant to be used as a mix in with your moisturizer rather than an all over treatment. So you know how we would buffer 
our tretinoin with moisturizer. Well, you can also do that with this vitamin C and it does not like ruin the effects of the vitamin C. In fact, it helps really soothe your skin and keep you from having any of that sensitivity while still having the benefits of a vitamin C style product. I have been using this for a while and I'm still waiting to see those really brightening results. However, I will say by the end of the day, when I take my makeup off, my skin feels brighter. It feels, I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's a feeling that I've never had before because again, I've never used a vitamin C. It just feels less dull, I guess, is the, is the answer there. And I'm really excited to play around with this a little bit more. If you want more information on this specific product or any of these, let me know. We can do a full routine or review on them. But those two things I would have never guessed I would put into my routine, but it's been really fun to start to play with new ingredients that were made for sensitive skin and that I feel comfortable using with my tretinoin. But don't worry, I still have a few product recommendations for those of you who are not ready to jump into that just yet. This is a new product to me. I've only had it for about a week, but this is the Paula's Choice Omega Plus Complex Serum with chia and flax seeds. So this claims to strengthen, nourish, visibly smooth your skin for healthy glowing skin. I freaking love this stuff. I have been using this in place of my Great Barrier Relief from Crave Beauty, which I do like. I just find that it's a bit oily for me, especially in the summer, and I've had breakouts from it in the past if I use it too often. So I was looking for something that would also help build my skin barrier while I'm using Tretinoin. That's sort of a serum-based product, and I found it. I'll give you a little swipey swipey so you can see the consistency here. It's a nice, thick serum, but once rubbed in, it's completely clear. It sinks into the skin beautifully. This could be worn morning or night in my opinion. This sits really well under makeup. It sits beautifully under moisturizer. And I have been applying this onto my face while it's wet because it has glycerin in it. So it's going to really trap that water in your skin. And then I apply my thick moisturizer, which we'll talk about next after that. And honestly, I feel like that moisture barrier has been locked in for the night. And I've also noticed since using that, that I don't wake up with as much irritation or redness on my skin after a tretinoin night. So if you're looking for something to help build your skin barrier, something unique that is fragrance free, sensitive, skin friendly, and it is available at Sephora right now, because now Paula's Choice is at Sephora, try this one out. So after I use my Paula's Choice, I have really, been digging using my CeraVe moisturizing cream on my freaking face. Never in a million years, again, would I think that I would be wearing this on my face because I have always considered myself to be an oily person. So after I had my little rash scenario a couple months ago, I was really trying to build up my skin barrier again because it was really, really mad. And the only thing I did was wash my face with Cetaphil and apply this and my SPF. But this was the only moisturizer I used for a week, and I'm not kidding you, my skin has never looked so good. Even to this day, it doesn't look as good as it did after my rash because I was being so incredibly simple and in using this. I was really worried at first that it was going to break me out or clog my pores. Absolutely not. You guys know that I love the CeraVe PM and it's still a favorite of mine. Probably better for my summer skin, but in the winter, it's thick, it's occlusive, it's sensitive skin friendly, includes ceramides, fragrance free, it's really inexpensive. I lather it on my body and my face and it just does such a great job. So this is a beautiful pairing. If you are having that super dry tretinoin skin, try this out. It has been amazing and I will continue to use this on my face and I'm just so glad that I tried it that one time. Lastly, let's talk a little bit about the changes in my makeup routine. As I said at the beginning of the video, I truly consider myself now to be someone with combo to dry skin, which is something I would never have said before. I have been an oily person my entire life. However, tretinoin can cause dryness in a lot of skin and with continued use, I do feel like it has changed my skin type. On top of that, I'm getting older, I'm 27, and I think as you get older, you start to lose that natural elasticity in your skin. You start to lose some of that natural oiliness. So that's probably also a factor into it. And the third factor is that I started treating my skin differently and applying different makeup because I do believe that using the products that I was using, which we'll talk about, was actually making my skin more oily because I was constantly trying to dry it out. And that may sound confusing, but for example, I was a Fit Me Matte and Poreless from Maybelline and a Bare Minerals Bare Pro 
foundation type of girl. I mean, this is a pressed powder foundation. And these are amazing products, but I was using these super mattifying products and piling them on, especially while I had acne. And because of that, my oil was fighting through them. And then every 20 minutes, I was blotting my face with an oil sheet, which would then dry my skin out and cause my skin to create more oil. So I just didn't realize what I was doing was actually increasing the cycle of my oiliness. So since then, and this journey of sort of waking up every day and realizing, huh, I don't feel oily or making it to the end of the day wearing a cream product and thinking, whoa, I don't have a ton of oil on my face. I might have a bit on my chin. You know, my T-zone looks a little bit oily, but nothing broke apart. Maybe I'm not as oily as I think. And trying to learn how to balance my skin with these various products, you know, having one exfoliating product alongside with a very moisturizing product to try and find that balance because at the end of the day, I think I am more combination to dry at this point. So I have completely changed my makeup routine. It's so funny to go back and look at some of the videos that I first uploaded to this channel because I was talking about oily skin makeup, the best cream products for oily skin, which I still stand by. And a lot of the products that I was recommending are these products that are very mattifying and, and more old school makeup, if you will. Now, most of the makeup that I use are from smaller indie brands that you know have found a way to create sensitive skin friendly makeup that is also good for your skin or does not hurt your skin so two examples here this is the arrive beauty skin boost this is definitely a summer favorite i talked about this in my best makeup of 2020 super lightweight there's no spf in this product so that you can really use your own which will get into this before you apply any makeup and it doesn't mess with that. And then the other one that I had been using in the winter is the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint. I talk a little bit about this in a trendy video so I can link that up above. This one is basically a sunscreen with makeup in it. Would be much more suited for dry skin, but I find that I'm able to wear both of these throughout the year based on if I'm feeling super combo or super dry. So I've had a lot of fun kind of figuring that out. And that's also why I haven't uploaded a Tretinoin Makeup for Beginners video because I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm feeling a little bit like a beginner in this you know, cream beauty world that I'm really enjoying and loving. But once I get there, I will definitely upload that video because there are staples like this powder foundation that, that got me through the worst of my purge while still making me feel beautiful. So that will come, I promise. One thing I can tell you that has not changed is my favorite sunscreen. I still wear the Polish Choice Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense Sunscreen almost every single day. However, I have made it my mission, talked about this on my Instagram, if you wanna follow me, quick plug. I kind of talk about things every single day, different products. I have made it my mission to try and find as many good mineral sunscreens for us sensitive skin people as I can, and it is proving harder than I thought. So I have tested out the La Roche Posay mineral. I really love that. I talked about that in a, in a video recently. I'm obviously obsessed with this one, and I'm going to test out the Color Science one. It's in the mail now, so we can talk about that one once I get it. But just know that if you are looking for a good mineral sunscreen that will not irritate your skin, I still have not updated. This is still my number one favorite. And now that it's available at Sephora, I feel even more inclined to tell you guys about it. So this girl is still my number one. And there you have it. 18 months down and hopefully forever to go. If you have any questions about any of the products or my routine or tretinoin in general, I am always answering my comments below. I never let one go without answering. And you can also DM me on Instagram. It's at the Rudy Berry. My next video is going to be with my husband. We are actually going to do head to head La Roche Posay versus CeraVe, which is so fun because I love both of those brands, but there are a few differences and I find there are winners in each category and I cannot wait to see you then.